Hi, my name is Vandot Nahavanipur, and I am the author of O'Reilly's iOS 4 Programming Cookbook. And this is the first video in the series of videos that I want to make um, teaching iOS developers um, about the importance of logging in their iOS applications. After about three years of developing iOS applications, I've come to the conclusion that um, you can sometimes create a very, very complicated piece of software and um, this complication um, in the whole structure of the application doesn't necessarily mean that the application is going to be uh, more difficult to debug. In fact, um, I have created very big applications for some really, really um, important clients and um, it, it might be surprising, but I've never had to actually debug the applications because um, I, I and the other t um, the people who were in, working in the same team had put enough um, logging information in the application uh, for us to be able to determine the cause of every single issue inside the application by just looking at the logs. So um, I just wanted to encourage you to, be, um, to start using logging more in your applications and um, a series of four or five videos that I want to make here are going to make my point um, even more clear um, by basically starting from the beginning and taking you through some more advanced subjects. Um, so um, what I really want you to get from the, 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 these videos is you can create really sophisticated iOS applications without having to debug them. And uh, by that, I don't mean that your applications are going to be perfect. By that, I mean, even if there is a fault in your application, which is really likely that you, you're going to find some issues in it, you are going to be finding those issues without having to debug your application. And uh, you can find the problem with your application just by looking at the logs. So let's go ahead and create a window-based application. I've already done one. So here's the application I've created. Um, you might be surprised, but the whole logging in the iOS uh, SDK is handled using a method called NSLog. And um, if you get, get the, the IntelliSense on NSLog, you can see that NSLog doesn't return anything and uh, takes in a formatted string. Um, for example, if you have an instance of NS string and you put some information inside this, I'll just say, some string inside this and if you want to log this you can log it in this way now you, you can see that there are two arguments passed to the nslog method first one being the format of the string that is to follow and the second one is the argument that you pass to the nslog to format and here you can see that I've put percentage at sign, and by that I mean I am going to put an NS log in the logs. I'm sorry, an NS string in the logs. And NS string is my string. If for example you have actually before before I go any any further, let me let me run the application for you and let's have a look at the logs. You can bring you can bring the um, the console screen, which will contain all, all your logs. You can just use the um, run menu on top and then show sorry um, you can use the console screen right here so you just go to run and then use console and that's gonna bring up the console here so let's go ahead and build and run the application and see what happens it's the first time I'm running iPhone simulator tonight so it's a bit slow so you can see that I got some string inside this which is the value of my string all right i'll stop this application let's go ahead and let's say you have an integer and uh, an unsigned integer or let's go ahead and create an s integer i put the value of 20 in here and i will nslog this now you have to format this again you have to tell nslog what you're printing and in case of my integer which is of type ns integer you put percentage LD and you need to make sure that you cast this to a long value. Now, this is outside the scope of this um, video for me to explain, but um, you can look for um, 
formatted strings or formatting strings in iOS SDK um, in developer.apple.com. You can just look for formatting strings and uh, you can find a really good documentation from Apple telling you how to, why you should basically um, use NS integer and NSU integer and um, typecast them to long and um, unsigned long as you'll see soon. So let's go ahead and I will also put an NS log here and I'll say my string. Let's see what happens. I got some errors here. My string is undeclared. All right. I run the application. You can see I got the value of 20 and I got the value of the string here. Let me just go ahead, by the way, and reset my simulator. I got some applications in there. Just all right. Okay. Now let's say I got an unsigned integer. My unsigned. I'll set it to 30 and I'll go ahead and log it. All right, great. Run the application. I get 20, which is the value of my integer. I get the value of my string and I get the value of my unsigned integer. Now, one of the most important things in iOS SDK is printing out objects. Any object can be printed using the formatting of percentage and at sign. So suppose I go ahead and create a UI button. Okay, I'll create a rounded rectangle button and uh, I will NS log it. All right, now I don't really have to release this button. I don't want to go into memory management and stuff, but anything that is created with a class method is going to be auto release. So I don't have to release the my button for the slightly curious people out there. So as you can see, um, what I printed out is the value of 20, which is in the integer, the my string and the unsigned integer. And then I get something here, which is um, the result of printing out the logs for my button. Now, some of you might be curious, how is my button printing something like this? Now, every object, every instance of NS object has um, an instance method called description. This instance method should return an instance of NS string. And if you override the description instance method of a subclass, of NS object, you can provide your own string. Let's go ahead and I, I want to demonstrate how this actually works. Let's say I want to create an object, my own object, and I will call it my object I created. Inside my object's m file, which is my implementation, implementation file, I'll create description and here I will return this is my description of this object. Now, what I will do, I will create an instance of that object. For now, I'll comment all these things out. Mm, this is capital M. All right, I will NS log it and I will release it. What do you think is gonna happen? As soon as I run the application, you see that? The description that I provided and I returned in the description instance method is printed here. Simply because the nslog method, if it finds that it has to print out an object, is going to internally call the description instance method of that object and it's just gonna print out whatever a string is returned from that. So in the case of the UI button, you can see that Apple has provided you with the class name, the, um, the pointer where that, mem where that object is pointing to in the memory, the frame for that object, the X, Y, and the width and height, whether it's an opaque or not, and the layer um, object, which is the uh, CA layer. 
and also the memory and the address for that CA layer. So you can see that uh, the UI button itself has provided some of these basic things. Um, I think for this video, th this is quite enough for you to get. Um, in the other videos, what I'm going to do is to go into some more sophisticated ways of um, logging um, what happens inside your application and um, providing a better feedback to whoever is testing your application, even if it's you or any other teammates who are working on the same application, whether your application is working fine or not. So I hope um, you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, let me know. I'll do my best answering those questions. Thank you.